Hi there, YouTube Guild Mouse here, and just to cut to the chase, we're going to talk about changes. What kind of changes? Well, to put it quite simply, the kind where you are transformed from one living being to another living being, or possibly an undead being. But I haven't been in those kind of games just yet. So, something that's been brought up in casual conversation with me before is polymorph versus um, shape-shifting. Um, for anybody who's familiar with druids, druids at a specific level can change shape into a bear or a snake or a wolf or a snow leopard and a there's a, a little bit of confusion as to why uh, the willing change as opposed to a forcible change would cause any kind would or wouldn't cause disorientation so what I want to talk about is just that uh, the differences behind changing and ways that role-playing them or just some ideas to give you for role-playing those changes might make your game a little more in-depth and involved. I'll start with the one that I feel like doesn't need a bunch of explanation but again if you guys want to hear more on it hit me up in the comments or just send me a private message and we'll discuss it out. All is good. Um, Magical beings like druids, where they are connected with nature, turning willingly into a bear at will, doesn't lose a sense of self or consciousness. Um, they maintain themselves as they are. So even though they're a bear, they're more likely to stand on their back legs and claw claw bite. Favorite moves. Um... It, most of those changes have a time limit, they're temporary, not permanent, so there isn't really a chance for an adjustment period. Um, true, you do come across the ones that are super high level so they can stay in it for hours and hours and hours upon time, and yes, that in that case there would have been an adjustment period. But in combat, it's very unlikely. I'm not exactly... <laughs> um, just that little part right there. That I'm not exactly. So something to keep in mind for uh, willingly shape shifting into something or shape changing into something, as opposed to forcibly doing so, is one is definitely against your will, obviously, because it's you know kind of in there. Um, and one is timed. There's a difference between magic, uh, willing magic, and force magic, and. That's something I guess I could talk about later, or I probably will. Spellcasters are not entirely my forte. I like to swing a sword and not worry about having to hibbly <laughs> But we'll talk about that later, maybe. So when you're polymorph or forced into another form, my best example um, of race to race would be if you're going from say a halfling to a half elf um, the jokes about humans being dire halflings are probably some of my favorites but this is an experience that happened to me in game before um, puddle duck we've all heard about her before um, my favorite rogue ever because she was my rogue I have friends who I favor theirs but we're not talking about them um, puddle duck was shapeshifted into a half-elf and had to go through this period of okay how how do I how do I body how do I do this thing how do there were distinct moments of standing up made her lightheaded because she's not used to the change in the atmosphere or it takes a lot longer to stand up um, or it feels a lot longer hey I can reach this thing on the shelf because I don't have to climb anything anymore. Um, new body means that... Who put these watermelons on my chest? Um, whoa, where did I get that huge butt? Things like that 
those are things that you can role play and incorporate into your game. Just the fact that, whoa, I never knew my fingers could be so long. You know, things like that. Just small things. Um, you haven't changed personalities. You've changed bodies for something that isn't like race to eight race, but race to species. Think about a human turning into a cat. If you want to think about race to species, think about an elf turning into a cat. This one was brought up in the comments before, and I kind of I, I thought it was a good thing to address in in my video chats to you, my lovely friends. When you're thinking about a graceful elf turning into a graceful cat, something that you should keep in mind is you still have to learn how to cat. You really do. Because instead of being somebody who walks on two legs, you now have four legs. And you have to figure out if your back left and your right left, or your, <laughs> if your back left and your front right and how those move, and then you have to figure out how balance works. Look at how cat physiology works. You use your whiskers to measure spatial distance. Your tail helps you maintain balance. It also is a good indicator of your mood. You're covered in fur. Humans have skin. Elves have skin. We're not furry. We're not a furry people. Elves don't have a tendency to grow beards. Look at those smooth freaking chins. There's, we don't have a tendency to grow beards, friends. But now you are covered in hair. You might as well be a mini dwarf. I'm sticking to that. <laughs> um, you have to learn how to cat. And worse, more so, you might not be able to speak um, your native tongue anymore. Animals are not built for that. Um, fun fact. <laughs> sure, they make sounds similar to that of people or other creatures, but the truth is, you're still going to end up going Brow! when someone asks you if you want some tuna or if you would like some jerky that's been in your pouch that everybody's divided amongst themselves since you're now a cat and can't wear your armor anymore. Sure, there are some perks. You get to roll in the grass. Oh, you have to learn how to hunt. You have to learn how to food. Um, you have to learn how to use the bathroom again. Yeah. You have to learn how to cat and communicate without words. And I think that even beginning role players, no matter how shy they are or uncertain, can totally rock out a cat attitude. Uh, Guildmaster Dan, who was so kind to help me with this uh, particular thought about, you know, turning from a one thing to a cat, um, was, I roll around on the floor. I foof up my tail and I freak out and I run back and forth and up and down and roll and... You're learning the mechanics of your body really, really fast. If you crash and burn into a wall, you meant to do that. But you had that moment of a cat spaz attack. Or at least that's what I like to call them when they decide to run through the house and like their little NASCAR race cars. <laughs> so, those are pretty much my two real ideas about forced shape changing and wanting to actually shape change. Um, there isn't really a transition period because there's the difference between magic that's temporary and the kind that completely changes your physiology permanently until more magic can be applied or more magic can be applied or you're, you die or you know someone skins you for whatever. <laughs> and that's the show. So. Drop me a comment, tell me your thoughts, your ideas, ask me to elaborate on some things because, to be totally honest, I think there's more routes that I could go, but I just wasn't quite thinking about all of the avenues. I really just wanted to cover those two things right now, um, but I'm always happy to chat with you guys about whatever. <laughs> um, I'm currently looking for more subjects to talk about. Uh, I definitely have a couple of other videos that are coming up that I'm pretty excited to do. Uh, something in my future plans that I will be doing is I'm going to be talking about items and um, clothing details and some class information from a variety of different games. Um, not just Dungeons and Dragons, which is usually my focus because it's really the primary game that I get to play. So again, 
drop me a message. Say hey. Tell me about the weather. Tell me about your day. Ask some questions about uh, today's topic and some past topics or suggest some new ones. And I'm so happy you stopped by, you shiny happy people. It was nice seeing you, and I look forward to seeing you again. So, bye-bye. But you know, my editor, Guildmaster Dan, will hopefully watch this part and know to do it. I went and saw Avengers Age of Ultron, and, um, spoiler alert! Be ready for your feels to hurt so bad that you want to cry, or at least shout out in absolute anger, but you'll see when you see it if, you know, you're into, you know, Avengers, what have you. <laughs> pigtails! If you're into pigtails, woo! Awkward for everybody. So, I hope you guys enjoyed your movie, I hope you guys enjoyed the show, and I'll catch you next time. Ah. Why, Marvel? Why? Why you gotta do me like that? Just, why?